Okay, this video is going to be about using this nDerive function that's in your calculator. And I'm gonna be showing screenshots from a TI-83+, Plus, but it'll work on um, better and newer versions of that. And um, I put some other information along with these as, uh, as we go through it. So you'll see, don't worry about it if you have an advanced calculator, most of these will work. There's a couple other versions that may be slightly different, but for the most part, I'll be able to cover it. So um, really, I'm gonna focus this video on using this nDerive function um, if you wanna make a graph of the derivative. So if you have a function and you wanna graph its derivative, in other words, you don't have the derivative function itself and uh, you wanna graph it for whatever reason, um, I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'll make some other comments about uh, some other things you can do. So if you want to graph the derivative function, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta go to y equals you can see that y equals button there. Just make sure everything's cleared out of there first. So you might wanna scroll down, make sure nothing's there. Also make sure that you don't have any of the plots on. So you don't want like these plot one and plot two, plot three, you don't want those on. Okay, you wanna make sure those are, none of those are highlighted, all right? So once you're there, you're gonna press the math key. So I'm over here on the left, so you wanna press that math key right there. Um, when you're in y equals, and then you're in the math menu, and you want to scroll down, you want to use the arrow keys and scroll down to end derive. It's the, the eighth one. And to select that, you just hit enter, right? Hit enter to select end derive. And what will pop up then in y equals uh, is this. Okay, so your y equals screen should look like this. Now, if it doesn't look like that, it's probably because you have a newer calculator, which is awesome. Good for you. I have an old one. And so the newer calculators will display something like this. Okay, and so what the calculator is gonna be looking for is for you to fill in those boxes and the function itself that you have will end up be being plugged in there. So that you'll plug in the function, whatever it is there. And you're also gonna fill in ddx and you're gonna put in x equals x. And so if you wanted a, a number in there, if you wanted the calculator to evaluate at a number, you could put in a number here. I don't recommend doing that uh, for this because it just won't work. You don't want to evaluate the derivative at a number. You're trying to graph the whole derivative function. So that's why we're just putting x in there. So our variable is x. You're differentiating with respect to x. All right, so it won't look like that. It'll look like a, an easier version of that on a newer calculator. But n derive is what, what you got. All right, and so you're going to enter the equation. So you need an equation to enter. So if you're just practicing, you can use the one I'm doing. Um, we did this one in an example. It was uh, an optimization problem. So I'm going to use 40 times pi times x squared plus 300 over x, kind of a complicated one. And uh, I want to graph the derivative. I want This is my original, right? So this is my original up here, um, 40 pi x squared plus 300 over x. And I didn't take the derivative. I want the calculator to graph the derivative. Okay, so it's going to find the derivative and graph it. And so what I do is after n derive, I put 40 pi x squared plus 300 over x. Um, there's more I need to type in there. So that's where in the newer calculators, you would plug all that in right there, right? And you would have already had X here and X here. So you're just plugging in the function there. And if you have a TI-83, you'll need to do this step too. If you have a newer one, you won't have to, but basically you need to tell the calculator, um, what you're taking the derivative with respect to and what, uh, what number you want to put in. We're not putting in a number. It's just X. So there's a comma and an X and a comma and an X that you would plug in after that. All right, if you're looking for the comma key, it is actually underneath sign. So it's down there. All right, so you'll need that comma. That's what your calculator should look like. Okay, and then now it's time to troubleshoot. So this is the might be the trickiest part. So you're troubleshooting the graphing by adjusting the window. And my advice to you, especially as you're just starting all, off, is to adjust one or two parameters at a time. Don't adjust too much. So your window, the standard window looks like this. And depending on what you previously have graphed, you might not have that standard window set up already. It might be from a previous thing you've graphed. So that's the initial uh, thing. That's a negative sign out front here. So negative 10 to 10. So the, the lowest x value to the highest x value. And then this is what it counts by. X scale is what it's counting by on the x axis. And y scale is what you're counting by on the y axis. So this would go from negative 10 to 10 on the x and y, counting by ones. And that's not gonna work out so well. Um, as you can see, if you graph it, uh, it looks like that. And that's, that's pretty awful. 
um, it doesn't look very good. So I'm gonna need to mess with the window. And so my instructions really are just to kind of go back and forth till you get a clear graph. So there's never a uh, perfect answer all the time because every, every equation is a little bit different. So you have to know something about what X values seem to make sense. Um, in the example we were doing, negative X values didn't, didn't work out. It wouldn't, would be meaningless in the problem. So you have to make sense of it. So I eventually worked my way through and I changed my window to this. All right, so I made my minimum X value negative five my maximum to five, just so I could see a little bit more of it. Even though my negative X values didn't make sense in the problem, I still wanted to kind of get a sense of where I was. Um, I counted by ones, and then you could see how drastically different my Y, min, and max were. They went from negative 1500 to 1500, and I counted by 250s. All right, I can barely even see my Y axis on here, but uh, that's because there's an asymptote, and this old calculator doesn't do a good job of graphing an asymptote. But regardless, I'm really only interested in one thing on here. Um, at this point, we have graphed the derivative. So this is the graph of f prime of x or dy dx, right? We just graphed that. And so what I'm interested in is when the derivative is zero, okay, in this problem. So that's just how you get the graph. When is the derivative zero? So I'm going to go a step further than getting just this graph. Maybe this is all you needed, but... If I want to see when the derivative is zero, I'm going to have to use calc, and that's an option in your calculator. And so you can see over here on the left, we've got a second button, and I want to use the calculate feature on the trace button. So to out activate any of those, you have to hit the second and then trace. If it's a different color for you, no big deal. It's the same, same stuff. And then you can see in the calculate menu, you've got a bunch of options. Um, you can just get the value on the graph. I want to get the zero. I want to know when that derivative uh, is equal to zero. In other words, when does it cross the x-axis? Where's the x-intercept, right? I want to look for this point up here. All right, that's what I'm going to look for. So I'm going to tell the calculator to look for it for me. And what it wants are some boundaries. So when you click Enter after selecting that, all right, you're going to use the arrow keys to select a left boundary. So on the bottom, you'll see the coordinates of where this little cursor currently is. And you can see the little crosshairs thing. So I'm going to use those arrow keys, and I'm going to move over, based upon where I see x and y is, to somewhere to the left of the intersection. I can visually see that my x-intercept's right there. So I'm just going to select a left boundary. And I'm just telling the calculator, hey, this is the furthest left you'd need to look for this x-intercept. And then after you hit Enter on the left bound, it'll automatically generate the right bound. You can see that it already put like a little teeny tiny arrow up here. Right, there's a little arrow up there, and it's going to now look for a right bound. So you have to select some area to the right of where you can visually see the x-intercept. I can see it's there, so I better go to the right of that so that uh, I get a second arrow generated. Um, so it's looking between those two arrows. So somewhere in between here and here, the calculator is going to look for an x-intercept. Um, the last thing... It shows up as a guess. You just make a guess. You just hit enter. So in between these steps, I'm just hitting enter um, once I've moved the arrows around. So you can try to take a guess. It doesn't really matter what you do there. Um, and lastly, what will happen is your calculator will be thinking, 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 and then it'll display the zero. And here it is. And you can see that y is zero there, and you can see my, my x value is there. So I rounded this one to three decimal places, so 1.061. And in the context of my problem, I wanted to know about a minimum value. So I was able to see that on my graph, I can see that this is below, below the x-axis, meaning these are negative y values, which represent negative slope on my original. And then I can see my positive uh, y values over here, which represent positive slope on my original. So I can kind of make this little chart. And I can I can see that my graph, my original graph, must have been must have been decreasing and then increasing. Right there was a there was a horizontal tangent line there. That's when y is zero, and so I know that from the derivative. And so that x value must be a minimum. And you know, depending on the context of your problem, you might have more than one, or uh, you can investigate that from there. But that should give you a good start on the step by step things. Um, let me know if you have any 